morning. Meantime, the suspect, Faisal Shahad, uh, Shahzad, rather, was born in Pakistan. He became a naturalized citizen of the United States back on April 17th of 2009. Then he recently left the country. It was back in June of 2009. Didn't return until this past February, some eight months later. Uh, in both cases, he flew in and out of Dubai. Whether or not that was uh, his final destination is not known at this time. And law enforcement officials tell us CNN Shazad had made international calls in recent weeks, and they also tell us Shazad uh, claims to be married. Yeah, in uh, fact, we're going to be hearing from a neighbor in yeah. a few minutes who claims that uh, she lived next door to the family, actually, uh, that he had a wife, and also the couple had two young children. So we're going to be getting more about who he was um, uh, from people who live near him, and also whether or not he had accomplices. Our Nick Robertson is live in London this morning, and uh, you're also working your sources there. More on where the investigation is going now. Good morning, Nick. Uh, good morning, Kieran. Well, clearly a lot of the investigation is going to focus on that time spent in Pakistan as well as what can be gleaned from the premises and whatever insights neighbors can provide as well. But what did he do in Pakistan? There is a modus operandi that we've seen in Europe and in the United States with Najibullah Zazi, Brant Neil Venus, people who've gone there to get training. Um, in the case of Najibullah Zazi, when they return, and in the case of a number of people in Britain as well, when they return, within a very short space, space of time putting into effect some kind of explosives plan. In this case, uh, very crude and rudimentary, not the kind of thing we've seen associated with Al-Qaeda, but a lot of similarities with a plot put together by two uh, doctors working in Britain who attacked Glasgow Airport and tried to attack uh, London with a fuel-filled car with propane gas tanks, uh, and the explosives didn't go off in the case of the attempt in London. So we've seen this type of thing come before, and the root, the common cause here, not necessarily Al-Qaeda, but buying into this sort of overall global jihadist message that Al-Qaeda puts out. You don't have to be a member, but if you buy into that message, they've said it on their websites. I'm an al-Zawari, the number two at Al-Qaeda has said it as well. Everyone out there who supports us knows what we want them to do. Just go ahead and get on with it. You don't need any more direction from us. This has some of those hallmarks about it, Kieran. Investigators, no doubt, looking into those angles. And Nick Robertson, uh, we should report right now uh, that we want to put up on screen, if we could, uh, we have a picture now of the suspect, uh, Faisal Shahzad. Uh, that's a picture of him that we've obtained uh, in just the last uh, few minutes. Uh, and Nick, uh, as, we're, as we're showing that picture to our audience, I mean, you've been all over the world. You've, you've certainly been in this part of the country. You've reported uh, you know, many times on, on the Taliban, uh, both in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. Obviously, we don't know definitively if there are links uh, between this suspect and, and what's happening uh, over there uh, in that part of the world. But uh, obviously, uh, the Taliban uh, has made threats that they would like to see something happen uh, on American soil. And certainly, we know that counterterrorism officials in the United States know that New York is the prime target for al-Qaeda, again, whether or not it's al-Qaeda or associated groups like uh, the Pakistani Taliban. Uh, there, there are proven... Uh, links between Pakistani Taliban and Al-Qaeda. There are, there are proven cases where the Pakistani Taliban have been on the lookout for people just like, uh, just like Mr. Shahzad, who've got U.S. passports, who know New York, who know other cities in the United States. These are the prime golden opportunity uh, uh, recruits for Al-Qaeda. And if this guy went to Pakistan completely on a, on a routine visit to see his family or whatever he did after he got his na naturalized citizenship and he was free to travel again, somebody could have approached him. It's certainly counterterrorism officials know that Pakistan, unfortunately for the Pakistani government and for the United States, is rife with these networks who will look out for people like him and do their best to go out of their way to recruit them by talking to them, selling them this message. Uh, so th these these traits and tactics that al-Qaeda and the Pakistani Taliban uh, are employing and may have employed in this case are nothing new to counterterrorism officials. You know what also, what also uh, strikes me as interesting? Uh, yesterday, I mean, we had some of the details, obviously, of what uh, 
This 1993 Nissan Pathfinder contained, meaning we knew that it had explosives inside and we knew that it was packed with propane as well as other things, but there were still questions about what the intent was. Is this a hoax? Is this to be a scare? And then, uh, you know, we hear in this late night press conference from our Attorney General the quote, which is, it was clear that the intent behind this terrorist act was to kill Americans. And of course, we're still waiting for uh, more details today as uh, this suspect is due to appear in the federal courthouse on exactly what he may be charged with. Well, clearly he's going to be charged with attempt, attempted murder and po quite possibly attempted uh, murder of more than one individual in this particular case. There's no doubt about it. Even if part of that bomb had gone off, anyone who was close by could have been caught in the, uh, in the force of the explosion. So shrapnel uh, caught in the burning fuel as it came out of that vehicle. We saw when the, uh, when the two bombers drove that vehicle into Glasgow Airport, a very similar type of bomb in a vehicle, propane gas tank a lot of fuel packed around it. Um, there was huge fire damage at the time. Um, uh, the, fortunately there, the building took the brunt of the blast, but on a crowded street close to, uh, close to Times Square, it would have been inevitable that there would have been multiple casualties in all of this, Karen. All right, Nick Robertson for us this morning from London. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And we're digging deeper now on the...